right, so we are going to be teaching our dog a go-to place or go-to mat cue. With this cue, we are going to be using something called shaping. Shaping is where you allow your dog to play a hot cold game to figure out what is the ideal behavior. Um, so getting closer and closer to that ultimate goal behavior. In this case, it is going to be Comet going onto a place or mat. So we have a carpet square that we'll be using for this. With place or go to mat, um, I use this one all the time with my dog. I find it super valuable. It's a great way to um, give your dog a safe place to be. It gives them a place to be kind of out of the way, whether that's at home or in a social setting. Um, it allows your dog a cozy spot to chew on a bone, um, and it can also help be proactive instead of reactive with a lot of unwanted behaviors. So if your dog barks every time someone knocks or rings the doorbell, jumps as guests enter, or likes to maybe beg for food at the dinner table, having a place cue, an area your dog can go to and stay put, can be really helpful in giving you a chance to reward those good manners versus reacting when they do something less ideal. So for this mat behavior, we are gonna start, like I said, with shaking, which means we are gonna pick up our carpet square. Um, I might get it a little bit interesting by like shaking it around, and then I'm gonna put it on the ground. Any sort of interaction Comet has with this carpet square, he might look at it, he might sniff it, he might put a paw in it. I am going to mark him with his marker word, which is yes, and then I'm gonna drop a treat either from my hand or on to the mat. We'll see how he does. Yes. So there he kind of moved towards the mat, so I'm going to mark and reward. Yes, good boy. There he laid down on the mat. Like I said, he knows this one, so he knows what's going to get him a reward. If he gets stuck here, I'm just going to do a reset treat and release him off. Okay. And again, I'm not adding any sort of verbal cue quite yet. I am waiting to see what my dog offers. Yes. So there he ran right to the mat and stood on it. Yes, good boy. There he laid down on it. If he does um, a down on the mat, which is a goal behavior, I'm going to jackpot with three treats in a row. Okay. Good boy. So once you get to the... So once you get to the point where every time you release your dog off, he is going back to his place and laying down, that is when we know our dogs are ready to add a verbal cue. Okay. With a verbal cue, some people like to point towards the mat. Um, Comet knows it both as a visual and verbal cue. Okay. Comet place. Yes. And there, because I know he can down on his mat, I'm going to wait for him to down. Okay, time it place. Yes, time it place. Yes, and there, because I know he can down on his mat, I'm going to wait for him to down. Okay, time it place. Yes, good. Once you get to this point with your mat, this is where we can work on um, and an automatic stay. So with an automatic stay, we aren't telling them stay put. We don't have to add that in. It's just implied that when he is put into his place, he should stay there until he hears his release word, which is okay. So, okay. So to work on that, I'm in place. Yes, that's kind of cheating. Um, 
Um, just like we worked on any other stay, we start with duration, which is just standing here and giving some treats while they stay put. After I do about several treats, I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, and release Comet off. So you'll be building duration like that, adding more and more time. The next step is... The next step is to add a little bit of distance, so getting further and further away when you send your dog and playing around with getting further away once they're actually there. Okay, so here I'm going to send Comet from a distance. Comet, please. Yes. And then I'm going to go up and reward him. And then I can practice backing away a little bit and then immediately returning and rewarding. This is an also a point after they have this down where you can practice adding distractions in, such as knocking on the door, the doorbell, people walking by, guests coming in, all of that stuff. Okay, so for our final. So for our final one, we are going to work on adding a little bit of distraction here. Um, Comment, please. Yes. So I can move over here. I can knock. I can move away. And stop my feet. And turn around. Yes. Or any sort of distractions like that that typically trigger your dog to move, jump, bark, anything like that. Okay, so those are very quickened um, exercises that you can do to work on your place cue. Um, Comet already knew this one, so it went by pretty quickly. This one will definitely take more time than what you just saw to build up a successful place. So things that you can use for your dog's place, um, what we are using today is a carpet square. Um, so that is totally fine to use. You can use things like your dog's bed, um, a mat of some sort, like a bathroom mat, works really, really well, especially on slippery surfaces. Um, you can use a blanket. Some people like to use raised surfaces, like raised beds. So anything like that you can use as your dog's place. Um, I would recommend starting out using the same object as your place, and then once they get the hang of it, you can generalize to different mats, squares, blankets, things like that.